This is an extension of the previous videos on service chaining capabilities with WebTiller. In this video, we will see how to use service chaining between sites, all of them which have different service VPNs. Attached is the topology we will use for this demo. We have three sites. VH1 is in site 11, which is in VPN 11. VH2 is in site 12 and in VPN 12. VH3 is in site 13 and has a firewall connected to it, but it is in VPN 13. By default, no traffic flows between any of the devices as they are in different VPNs. Now, we'll create a service chain policy to force the traffic between VH1, which is in VPN 11, and VH2, which is in VPN 12, to go through the firewall connected to VH3, which is in VPN 13. Similarly, for the return traffic from site 12, it will go through the firewall at site 13 before reaching its destination in site 11. To save time, I've already configured the firewalls and will focus only on creating the policy. Let's begin by checking our routes and communications. Let's go to networks. Let's check on VH1. Let's go to troubleshooting. And let's do a trace route to a destination which is connected to VH2. And as you can see, there's no communication between VH1 and VH2 since they are in different VPNs. So let's quickly check our routes. Let's go to real time. Routes. As you can see, I learned routes only from VPN 11 and I do not learn any routes from VPN 12 or the service side which is connected to VH2. Similarly, if I go to VH2, I do not learn any routes from VPN 11. Similarly, let's look at VH3, which is connected to a firewall, and it doesn't learn routes from both VPN 11 and 12. It has only routes connected to the firewall, which is in VPN 30. Now let's go to templates. Let's look at the template attached to VH3. Let's go to service VPN. And let's quickly view the VPN template, which is attached to this VH. Let's go to service. And here you can see that I've already advertised the firewall services that are connected to this VH, Net Service 1 and Net Service 2. Net Service 1 is connected to the inside interface of the firewall and service to the outside interface of the firewall. Now let's go to policies and create a policy. We don't need to define anything here, so click next. Now let's add our first control policy to leak routes between the VPNs. So let's call this from VPN 11 to VPN 12 and 13. Let's add a role. Let's match on VPN 11. Actions accept export to VPN 12 and 13. Save. Let's change the default action to accept. Let's save a policy. Similarly, let's add another route leaking policy to exchange routes from VPN 12 to VPN 11 and 13. Let's add a route policy. Let's add a first sequence match on VPN 12. Actions accept export to VPN 11 and 30. Save. Change the default action to accept. And save a policy. So these are our two policies for leaking routes between the different VPNs. So let's add our now control policy for the service chaining. So let's call this from site 11 to site 12. via firewall. Let's add a role and here match on site. The destination is site 12. To match on site 12, actions accept and set the service 
to net service one which is in VPN 13 and encapsulation of IPsec. Save and change the default action to accept. Save a policy. Similarly, let's add another control policy for the return traffic. Let's call it from site 12 to site 11 via firewall. Let's add our first rule. Let's match on site 11 and actions accept service and set the service to net service 2. The VPN of 13 and encapsulation of IPsec. Let's save and change the default action to accept. Save a policy. And we have all our required control policies now. Let's click next. We don't need to configure application of our routing, so click next. And let's assemble the policy here. Let's call this service chaining with different VPNs. And let's add the site list sequentially. So let's go from for the route leaking stuff from VPN 11 to 12 13. So let's add our site list. Now this will be added as an inbound site list at site 11. So click add. Similarly, for the route leak from VPN 12 to 11 and 13, let's add our site list, which will be an, again an inbound site list but at site 12. Now let's add our control policies from site 11 to site 12 via firewall, which is the service chaining policy. Let's add a, as an outbound site policy to site 11 and similarly for the return traffic from site 12 to site 11 let's add it as an outbound policy and site 12. That's all. Let's preview our policy. So we have VPN routes exchange from 11 to 12. It's matching on VPN 11 and exporting to VPN 12 and 13. Similarly uh, routes from VPN 12 are matched on VPN 12 and exported to VPN 13 and VPN 11. Those are our route leaking policies. Now, if you go for the service chaining policies, I'm matching on site 11 to site 12, I'm matching on site ID 12 and setting the service on net service 1 VPN 13. And similarly for the return traffic and matching on site ID 11 and setting the service on net service 2 VPN 13. Let's save a policy and activate our policy. Policies is pushed now. Let's go to networks. Let's go to VH1. Let's go to real time and check for routes. And now you can see that I learned routes on the service side which was connected to VH2. I learned those routes over OMP. Similarly, if I go to VH2, I learned the routes from VH1, which are 151.0 network. Similarly, if I go to VH3, I learned routes from both VPN 11 and 12, which is 151 and 152. So let's go back to VH1. Let's go to troubleshooting and do a trace route to a destination connected to VH2. And as you can see, now the traffic flows from VH1 to the to VH3 to the firewall and back from the firewall and then heads to a destination which is connected to VH2. Similarly, let's check the return traffic from VH2 to VH1. And here as well, we see that the traffic first flows through the VH3 and then to the firewall and then finally reaches its destination which is connected to VH1. Thus, using the centralized policy framework in Viptilla, we can create complex service chaining policies. That's it for this demo and thanks for watching.